So the other day I was watching the Philadelphia 76ers and I saw Joel Embiid do this. He hit his own hand and dislocated his finger and then apparently that injury alone has now made him unavailable for the next two weeks before he gets re-evaluated by the 76ers as he needs surgery on his hand. He obviously really could not have prevented that injury, that was pretty unlucky, but these injuries that you're going to see in this video are injuries that probably could have been prevented. So in this video we're going to be looking at six of the dumbest injuries that have happened to players over the years. And what are the dumbest injuries that have happened to NBA players outside of the game? Because obviously you can't help what happens when you're playing in the game. Joel Embiid obviously didn't mean to hit his own hand and dislocate his finger. So an injury like that would obviously not go in this video as that cannot have been prevented. And I'll be 100% honest with you, I'm not sure if I believe all of these injuries are true. I think some of them are so dumb that they're almost a cover up for something else that was nearly as dumb. Or even more idiotic than the story that came out. Like, some of the injuries you're going to hear on this video are just crazy, and most of them are not even that bad. Players just miss one, two games, which leads me to believe there probably wasn't a massive injury that happened. But some of them are career ending, so stay tuned. But if you enjoy these types of videos, it's a bit of a random one. But on this channel, we cover all sorts of NBA news, trades, games, anything. So in this video, we're going to look at injuries. With that said, if you enjoy these types of videos, be sure to hit that like button. Let's see if we can reach a thousand likes for the next video. It takes one second of your time and it really helps me grow. So I would appreciate it. If you're new around here and you enjoy NBA content, why not hit that subscribe button? Hit the notification button so you get notified whenever I post. And with that said, let's get on to the video. Number six. Andrew Bynum injured his knee bowling while rehabbing his other knee that caused him to miss so many games. Because he always knows enough, Skip Bayless. He always has the answers. And so when you're going out there bowling, and for those of you who may not know something about bowling, see, a bowling ball is kind of heavy. And understand something right there. It might not be heavy with somebody with these big Goliath hands like Andrew Bynum. But what happens is, is that the bowling ball that you hold with your finger, with your three fingers, okay? And you go down there. I'm surprised he didn't say he hurt his wrist. He actually hurt his knee. But he said this, okay? So you go out there and you got to walk down that aisle and then you got to bend down. You got to bend down. You don't stand straight up, Skip. Man. You got to bend down. You've never walked down the motion. You understand what I'm saying? You're right about that. Yeah. And I don't intend to anytime soon. But here's the deal. What I'm trying to say to you is this. You got to bend down. You got to bowl that ball down the road. And what happens, Skip, is this. It actually requires you to bend your knees a little bit. The very knees that have been hobbling <laughs> Andrew Bonham. But no, it's not going to have any effect on my knees whatsoever. This is Andrew Bynum. Andrew Bynum was signed by the Philadelphia 76ers in a three-team trade allowing Iggy to go to the Denver Nuggets, Dwight Howard to end up going from the Magic to the Lakers, and Bynum ended up going to the Sixers. Bynum was a very good player in LA. He was a young and upcoming center that looked promising if he could stay healthy. And that was the thing, he was unable to stay healthy. So whilst rehabbing his knee, he went bowling and injured his other knee, which allowed him to play a total of zero game for the Philadelphia 76ers. The thing about Andrew Bynum is that a lot of people discuss him and if he really is a bust or not, but the year before he got traded to the 76ers, he averaged 19 points, 2 blocks per game, 12 rebounds, shooting 69% free throw and 55% from the field. He was actually a pretty good big man. But then obviously injuries just derailed him for the rest of his career and even throughout his career in general with the Los Angeles Lakers too. But honestly, I'm not sure about you, but I don't think it would be the smartest idea to spend an evening bowling despite the fact that you're still rehabbing your knee. Something about that just doesn't seem right. And the craziest part after all that, he never got to play in Philly. Number five, BJ Tyler. BJ Tyler's story is one of the craziest stories I think I've ever heard. Tyler was a 6 foot 1 point guard who played at the University of Texas. He ended up being drafted 20th overall in the 1994 NBA draft by the Philadelphia 76ers. He only ended up playing 55 games for them in the 1994-1995 NBA season and he only averaged 3.5 points and 3.2 assists per game. But when you think about it, being drafted 20th overall, they suspected he would be a decent player coming into the league. He didn't turn out like that and so the Philadelphia 76ers sent him to the expansion draft. That was in the 1995-1996 NBA season, in which the Toronto Raptors were a new team and they selected him in the 1995 expansion draft. And according to journalist Chris Young's book, Tyler accidentally fell asleep with a pack of ice on his ankle. 
Now that doesn't sound too bad, and if you're an athlete or you played sport in high school or college like I did, you would know that if you're icing up your ankles or you're icing up part of your body, sometimes you just leave it on and you might fall asleep with it in the car. But looking at what happened to Tyler, I'm never gonna do that again. He ended up getting severe nerve damage and that nerve damage that he sustained on his ankle meant that he lost some of his speed, quickness and agility and subsequently that forced him to retire. Which is so crazy to me. He played one year in the NBA, fell asleep with a pack of ice on his ankle and had to retire. That is some terrible luck. And at that point, you just have to feel sorry for the man. 20th overall pick and then you fell asleep with some ice on your ankle and you had to retire. Yeah, that's, that ain't good, Chief. Number four, Derek Rose. Now Derek Rose, he's had some rough luck in his NBA career. His injuries have caused what was once the youngest MVP in NBA history to turn out to be a decent role player for the Detroit Pistons currently. He's a man that has basically had an injury in every year that he's played in and he missed many seasons simply due to the fact that he was injured. But one of these could have been prevented. So this was in 2008. It was Derrick Rose rookie year and he had a phenomenal start to the year. Obviously he was the number one overall pick and he entered the league like a man on a mission. He averaged 18 points per game, six assists and that was just going into his rookie year and the year wasn't over yet. The statement by the Chicago Bulls came out and it said, Derrick Rose isn't practicing Monday after needing 10 stitches to close a gash in his arm. The bull said Rose suffered the injury when he rolled over onto a knife he was using to carve an apple while in bed. Yeah, he carved an apple in bed and rolled onto the knife and cut himself <coughs> and needed 10 stitches. Come on, that's just one of the most bizarre injuries that a player can ever have. Like, why would you carve an apple in bed? Like, most people just get an apple and eat it, but not Derrick Rose, apparently. And this wasn't an injury where they could have wrapped something around his arm and he was fine. He literally had to rush in the morning to Highland Park Hospital because of this injury. And according to Derek Rose, this was his explanation. I was sitting in bed using a kitchen knife to slice an apple. I went to get a bottle of water and I came back and flopped down on the bed forgetting the knife was there and opened a gash on the bottom side of my forearm, just below the elbow. He said it was a silly accident. I panicked when it first happened, called my trainer. We got it stitched up around eight in the morning. Fred had to rush out of bed and get me to the hospital. It was a large wound, but they healed it up. And of course, at the time, many people didn't believe that Derrick Rose actually did get injured and this was a story to cover his injury, but he said, it's the truth. I'm not worried about that. I called my mom. She was like, what are you doing? It was a freak accident. Really? I was very scared. Next time I'll get somebody else to cut it. To me, honestly, it really does sound like something he was trying to cover up because there's no way you roll onto your knife and who cuts their apples on the bed? Like, I guess, I don't. Anyway, next story. Number three, Eddie Curry. Eddie Curry was meant to be one of the better players coming in the 2001 NBA draft. He was drafted fourth overall and he seemed like a pretty big player coming out of high school. And that was probably largely due to the fact that he was so big. Eddie Curry was a monster. He was one of the heaviest players weighing around 295 pounds when he went to Miami. But before he signed with the Miami Heat, he ballooned to 400 pounds at 29 years old. Which is why this story is a little bit funny. One day Curry went to practice doing some light stretching and he was rolling around on a medicine ball. And you know those medicine balls, they're pretty big. They can normally hold a person. But Eddie Curry sat on the giant blue physio ball during the break from Monday's practice and the ball exploded. Eddie Curry fell as the medicine ball popped and he hurt his wrist. Now, number one, at that point, I think he realized he probably needed to lose some weight, which didn't really happen. But number two, his career is just sad overall. A fourth overall pick who turned out to be one of the biggest busts in NBA history. It's just pretty sad to see overall. Number two, Lionel Simmons. Lionel Simmons was a Sacramento Kings rookie back in 1991, and at the time he was pretty into video games. He was able to get his hands on a Nintendo Game Boy, and he played it so much that he ended up getting tendonitis in his wrist and forearm because of the Game Boy. And it got so bad to where it forced him to miss a handful of games. You got that pun? Which is obviously one of the craziest and dumbest injuries of all time. The man played so much video games that he ended up getting tendonitis in his hand and forced him to miss games. Now, Lionel Simmons ended up being a decent player, especially coming out of college. He averaged 24.6 points throughout his four years in college. He was the seventh overall pick heading into the Sacramento Kings, made the all-rookie NBA first team in 1991. But of course, due to his chronic injuries, he only managed to play seven years in the NBA, and one of those injuries was because of video games. Pretty sad to see. 
And number one, Charles Barkley. This story is pretty crazy. And also because I think we all know Charles Barkley and how crazy he was back in the day, I think this story may have been a cover up, but maybe not. Obviously I don't know, but this was the story. Back in 1994, Charles Barkley burned his corneas when he apparently rubbed body lotion into his eyes during an Eric Clapton concert, and that caused him to miss the season opener. Charles Barkley had to wear eye patches for 12 hours, and he actually did travel with Phoenix, who would play Sacramento for the opener, but his coach Paul Westphal told him he would not play. The team doctor at the time, Richard Emerson, said it was a chemical reaction to a type of lotion that he uses. I wouldn't anticipate it'll reoccur because I don't think he'll use that type again. I don't know about you, but that whole story makes me question what Charles Barkley was actually doing and what really caused him to miss that first game of the season. Maybe he really did rub body lotion during an Eric Clapton concert, but something makes me question that story. To go back a ways on this one, we're going to opening night 1994. Opening night? Opening night 1994, and we actually have some TNT coverage from that night. Uh -oh. It's for real. Oh my God. It's early. 12-9, Sacramento has the lead over Phoenix. Charles Barkley, of course, not playing after getting that hand lotion or body lotion in his eyes at the Eric Clapton concert. What's the story to tell? Barkley's vision won't be impaired for long, but he probably thought his eyes were playing tricks on him tonight because the Kings were rolling. There's Charles sitting this dance out. Boy, did they need him. So there's Rod Thorne with me in the studio. That's Bob Lorenz. So yeah, Bob, you, had, so, you had lotion in your eye and you couldn't play? I, I, no, dude. The it wasn't had lotion. When did you, when did you, when did you put lotion, the lotion? <laughs> why were you at a concert with lotion? lotion? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> wait, it was on yeah, my hand. Why? Why, why? Wait. No, no. Not I, it was on your hand. Yeah, I was. <laughs> I was scared to death. There's be. a story behind see. that. No, dude. I was rushed to the hospital. No, we want to know why. You were rushed to the hospital from the concert? No, yeah, when I got home. I couldn't see. I had to call. I couldn't see. Y'all, y'all joking around, man. I was blind. I was blind for like three hours, Ernie. No, man, I'm trying they, to figure out like a band that they had to do. What you do with lotion at a concert? Hey, man. I'm telling y'all. Oh uh, yeah, it, it wasn't that good. Uh, y'all haters, man. Yeah, it wasn't that good. Y'all haters. I'm just trying to figure out like. Yeah, let's why say you, you had a you had all right, you had a concert. You're like, hey, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I can't say, I can't say, who does that? In the end, let me know what you think. Let me know what you thought about all these stories and let me know if you found any other NBA stories that you think were really weird and dumb NBA injuries. If you enjoyed the video, it was a bit of a weird one, but if you did enjoy it, please leave a like to show your support. Subscribe for more NBA content and I promise next video it will be an actual NBA video. With that said, hit the notification button if you want to stay updated with all my new videos and I'll see you guys next time. I'm out. Peace.